Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. Today, we're not gonna be looking at a commandlet, but more so an ability to add a functionality to a parameter on a commandlet or a function that we create ourselves in PowerShell when we're making modules or we're just making a script where we need to create functions because we have code that we are reusing often. We can have parameters and we can actually use validation on those parameters to make sure that the end user that maybe we're providing this module to or that we're providing this script to that has these functions, we want to make sure that what they're inputting matches what we're actually expecting them to put in. This could often be used for something for matching phone numbers, postal codes, zip codes, um, countries, a bunch of different things here that we can actually use. I'm going to show you guys how to do both the validate on a pattern, which uses a regular expression and also a validate set, which just basically actually kind of uses IntelliSense to give you a list of options to the user to actually pick one. If they put one that's not in there, it will actually invalidate it as well and give a nice little error message to the user. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started by just creating a very, very simple function and we're going to create two parameters and we're going to be looking at those validations. So we're just going to go ahead and we are going to start off by typing function here. And we are going to make our function called test me. And we're going to do an open and closing curly bracket here. Now to make sure that we make it a commandlet, we're going to do a commandlet binding open and close parentheses inside of square brackets and then we're going to put param open and close parentheses in there and we're going to int enter those parentheses and we're going to be creating our first parameter here so we're going to create a parameter here we're going to make these parameters mandatory so we're just going to put parameter open and close parentheses mandatory inside the parentheses and then what we're going to first do is we're just going to create this here. We're just going to put a phone and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to create our second parameter. Now, as you can see, we aren't doing the validation on there. And that's just because I want to show you guys without the validation, what happens and then the advantage of these um, validation sets. So we're going to make another parameter uh, mandatory here. We're going to do country. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to do a postal code here. And we're going to do country. Uh, we're actually going to change this to zip code because our example is going to be uh, using the zip codes and the country of the United States. So we have this function here and we're just going to make it go simply write output. And we're going to say zip code is in uh, zip code and then comma country. So we're just simply outputting the zip code and the country. So now if, if we actually go ahead and we try this, we go test me and then we put in the zip code. Let's put in something that we know would be right. So one, two, three, four, five. That is a typical zip code here. And we're going to put country. We're going to put US. Now this is what I would actually expect. As we can see, if we run this, it works fine, we got our output, but let's say I was bad and I put in a Canadian postal code here. So let's just do uh, A0B1C2. And then we wanna say that we're in country CA. We're still actually gonna get this working. It still works because we haven't validated the set. We haven't said that, no, this does not match a zip code pattern or no, this does not equal or is part of our lists that have a zip codes or we don't support this country yet. We don't know any of that information. Therefore, the user just goes in, blindly puts the stuff. It might ruin your database if your database doesn't have any validation. It just adds a lot of strength to your code right in here if you add these validate sets and validate patterns. So let's go ahead and let's just validate the pattern on the zip code first. So the first thing we're going to want to do is right under parameter mandatory, we're going to add a validate pattern and then open and close parentheses. Now, 
right away, just might as well put in a set of single quotes here. And then what I like to do, you can, of course, write your own regular expressions, especially if it's something that, you know, maybe is a little bit more customized to what you actually need. If you're putting something into a database and you need the zip code formatted a very, very specific way, or your postal code or your phone numbers formatted a very specific way, you definitely want the dashes. You only want spaces. You just want all of it stuck together. You're going to have to write your own regular expressions for that more than likely. But if you just want something as a very simple example, what I like to use is this regular expression website here. Regexer is how I pronounce it. Um, and they have pre-made expressions here. So we can actually go ahead and take this US postal code regular expression. We're just going to copy that. We're going to paste that in here. And now if we actually go ahead and we run this code, we're actually going to see that we got some red text here. We actually got an error. It said cannot validate on parameter zip code. The argument 01B as uh, A0B1C2 does not match the pattern provided. Supply an argument that matches this. So now, of course, we got to enter in the zip code properly. So now if we actually go ahead and we just put one, two, three, four, five, if we go ahead and we run this here, we get it back. Everything is actually good because we matched the zip code. So this is going to be very good if you're trying to insert phone numbers or insert postal codes and you really always want them to be consistent, you can force that consistency through a validate pattern, which is very, very good. Now, there might be some other situations where country. Now, I can maybe do a validate pattern on this and do matches that it's two digits, and it can be any character, any uppercase character. But in this case, what I actually want to do is I want to add a, a validate set here. So validate set and I want to give the options that are available to the user. So here we can actually just type in US here. And if we go ahead and we run this again, we're going to see that we get an error message. Now this one's a little bit nicer because it is a validate set and not a pattern, a regular expression pattern. Um, so here we get cannot validate on argument uh, country. The argument CA does not belong to the set US specified by the validate attribute, the validate set attribute. So if we go ahead and we change this to US here and we go ahead and we run this, we're going to see that it works fine. And what's nice here is if we do the country parameter, we actually get a pre-populated list with just US. Now, of course, if we actually added in other countries here, we can add CA. Um, let's add... Um, UK here as well, just so there's three. So we can actually see all the differences here. You can actually now see that our list provides us all three options. And once again, if we do CH here, um, we're going to see that it actually gives us as well in the error, it gives us all the three countries that are actually um, accepted. So that is a very, very good way to maybe provide a little bit more to the user on what you actually want compared to a pattern. But I do find the patterns are very, very good, especially when you're looking again at zip codes, emails, uh, phone numbers, uh, maybe addresses as well. That might be a little bit tougher, uh, but there could be a bunch of different things that you might need these. Uh, maybe you want dates in very specific formats if you don't want to have to reformat it in your code. Uh, but there are a lot of patterns as well on these regexer website here in community patterns. You'll see a bunch and there's a nice little search. So you can easily find if we look up postal code here, you will easily find that we get US postal code, um, uh, USA zip and Canadian postal code. And they'll often be... Um, the text here that will show you what is valid, what is not. And then you can add and you can test it yourself as well to make sure that it, it does work for what you actually want it to. Um, but that is a very easy way to get regular expressions. So you don't have to write them yourselves because sometimes those can be a little bit tricky. 
but adding these validate patterns and validate sets will just make sure that the data that you're collecting through these commandlets and maybe it just protects the user from maybe doing unnecessary damage to whatever they're trying to actually do with the command list. Now, of course, you might not need this on every command. Um, it's kind of up to your discretion on how you actually want to use these in any situation. Uh, but this is how I've used them in the past. It's mostly with just protecting and sanitizing that data that's coming in. This way, any data that's going out is actually what the user should actually expect. Now, if you guys want to see anything else on these quick tip videos, please let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll do my best to do a video on them if I can, um, if it can benefit the whole community here. And be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out, and I will see you guys on the next video.